Welcome back, horror fans, to the Weird Kid Horror Show. I am your host, the Weird Kid. So today, I'm going to show you how to make what I call a wasteland trophy head. So this is uh, something uh, to follow suit with uh, my buddy Keith over there at Cobwebs and Candlesticks. He's been doing a lot of post-apocalyptic stuff. Uh, I'm a fan of video games like Borderlands. Um, I absolutely love Fallout 3. Um, I just love that post-apocalyptic uh, aftermath where there's mutations and everything else. And um, this guy's one of them. So maybe he's like a, he lives in the dark subways and stuff and is a cannibal. And um, it's a trophy when you kill one. So they make a mount or something, you know. But um, no, actually... The truth of the matter is when I started this, I had absolutely zero clue what I was doing because um, we had some bad weather here in Florida. It's a bit windy now, and I do apologize for that, but we had some bad weather here. It was raining. We had a, a system coming through, and um, so the recording that I had intended to do outside got scratched, and I, said, I thought to myself, well, what am I going to do? So I thought, you know what, I've never done corpsing, okay? And I've bought this uh, heat gun at Harbor Freight, like, it's got to be like four or five months ago, and I've never used it, okay? So I figured, you know what, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to tell you step by step how I did this, all right? Um, the first thing I started with was a skull. And it was this this exact skull. Um, they're they're soft plastic. I mean, they're not too hard. They're they're pretty sturdy, but they are soft. And it's got a moving jaw, as you can see. Um, but the first thing that I did was that I made the eyes and teeth. And by and to do that, I took some sculpey and I rolled it in a ball into my hands. And then I used what are called glass cabochons. And you can find them on Amazon. Um, you, you can buy lots of them. They have uh, like 100 in a container. They uh, vary in size. And they're glass. You can bake them in the oven. It won't hurt them. And, and they have their various different pupil colors and designs. And so I went through and I chose the ones you see in here now, which is kind of like a uh, like a goldish brown, if you will. And so I made the eyes. By doing that, I roll out the sculpey into a ball, and then I push the cabochon into the eyeball, and then smooth it out and around the edges to clean it up. And then I use clay softener. If you don't have clay softener, you can use baby oil as well. And you take a brush, you brush it on, it removes fingerprints. It helps to smooth it out to give you a smoother texture. Once that was all done, my eyeballs were, were cooked. Um, the other thing that I did, I didn't want sparkly whites. So I took some uh, uh, King's Yellow and, and white. And just with a little bit of yellow, I mixed it in with the white to give an, just a very light tinted yellow and I painted the whole eyeball and it's okay if you get it on the cabochons because if you get paint on the cabochons it's okay when you're done it'll come off real easy you just rub the q-tip real hard around the glass eye and it'll come right off I, I promise you so don't worry about getting paint on the glass eye so once it was painted then I went ahead and put the uh, veins on which is the yarn technique and that's to take red yarn and to separate the strands and separate it and then pull apart each of the strands to give you a fluffy uh, little the, the little capillaries if you will and then with Mod Podge or if you don't have Mod Podge I use uh, Elmer's glue with water watered down Elmer's glue um, me I like to use a Q-tip um, you put it on the back of the eyeball and then with the, the glue mixture or the Mod Podge you start to push and spread the eyeball, uh, sorry, the red yarn 
onto the eyeball to create the illusion of capillaries. Then I moved on to the teeth. Okay, so the first thing I had to do too was to glue the jaw in place. So I had my hot glue gun and I went ahead and just uh, glued around the edges here where the jaw meets the skull and secured it in place on both sides so that the mouth was locked in a open position. I then took Primo polymer clay. It's, it's got a translucency to it, and it works really good for teeth, as you can see. Uh, so what I did was, I wanted to try something, because I knew I couldn't sculpt with polymer clay on this plastic skull, and then put it in the oven. We all know what would happen. I'd have a blob and a mess to clean up. So I thought, okay, well, what else can I do? Uh, so what I did was, I took the polymer clay and I rolled out the teeth and then I pushed them onto each tooth to give it the concave indentation it needed on the back to fit on there individually. And so once I did that I delicately pulled them off the, the teeth and laid them on a cooking sheet with aluminum foil but I put them in the order that they would need to go starting from left to right on the skull. That way I didn't confuse them and put the wrong teeth on there because there are different textures and ridges on these teeth. So I did that for the top and the bottom and threw that all in the oven. So while that was baking, I came outside and I cut me a plinth. A plinth is a base. Okay, I found this piece of wood that I had and rather than just be rectangular I went ahead and took my saw and I cut jagged zigzag you know a zigzag edge like just to kind of give it some character and I cut this extra piece of wood it was a, a cedar tree I've got grown here I had some extra pieces okay so I cut that and then I drilled a uh, I drilled a hole in the bottom uh, big enough to take the head of a screw and then I just screwed up underneath to attach this. But before I did the final torque on the drill, I left the space in the bottom because in there, underneath, I put some E600. Keith loves that stuff. Uh, he mentions it all the time, and it is good. It's an industrial strength adhesive. So I put that on there, and then I fastened it down good. So we got the screw and the E600 uh, glue that's gonna hold this thing and lock it into place. So then what I did was I went ahead and took the skull and I drilled, if you see this particular brand of skull, I don't know if you've seen this before or if you had some, underneath is a little dimple. Now that's probably where they had a, you know, when it came out of the mold, um, maybe it was some kind of a dimple in the uh, tooling to uh, help release or to lock it into place, I don't know, but what I went ahead is I took uh, a drill and I drilled a hole in it and then you could take uh, if you have a rugged sharp set of scissors you can take it and it will cut around just making it a shy bit smaller than the diameter of your post here okay your post and then once I had my hole cut I was able to slide it on to the post and then with my glue gun, I glued around the wood and the skull to tie it all in. So now you've got a skull that's mounted onto a plinth, as these are called, with the jaws fixed open. Okay? So now we're actually ready to work on this thing. I, um, like I said, I went to Harbor Freight months ago. You go there, these are like 15 bucks a piece. Super cheap. And they work great. I, I'm, I'm so glad I got it. And I'm so glad I got to actually play with it. So you're going to need a heat gun. You're going to need a glue gun. It wouldn't hurt to have spray adhesive. And then just plastic. It doesn't matter if it's white or gray. You can use Walmart bags, Save-A-Lot bags. If you got plastic... 
you can use it, okay? And so what I did, as you can see, is, is to take strips of plastic, okay? Uh, what you can do initially, what I did was I wrapped the whole thing with the plastic. And then with the heat gun, you go ahead and start basically shrink wrapping it to the skull. Uh, but before I did that, before I did that, I wanted to make sure that I could fit my eyeballs in the sockets. So I went ahead and I cut out this plastic in the eyeballs, okay? Now, you don't want to make your eyeballs too big, but you also, you also at the same time don't want to be critical if your eyeball is a little bit bigger than this opening, it's okay because I ran into that problem here and I'm going to tell you how, to, how you can overcome that. So then I drilled the hole for the eye so that I could fit the eyeballs inside the skull. And then I went ahead and started the corpsing process. So I go ahead and start wrapping the plastic. Um, you can bunch up the plastic and uh, twist it. You could heat it up over the gun, um, the heat gun, to create like a, an eyebrow if you want, uh, to fill in gaps, like, uh, you know, to add fascia to fill in the face. Or you could just simply do the simplest corpsing. Uh, me, I, I wanted to use it, so use it, I wanted to really fill in some areas to give it some more girth. Um, we all know this is the absolute end result. This is, you're not getting any more decay after this, okay? The body goes through many stages of decomposition. Um, it could be juicy, <laughs> if you will, uh, emaciated or whatever, or, you know, so it's up to you. It could be almost to the end where it's just very thin layer of skin left with like bits of fascia here or it could be less advanced, or maybe the sun dried it out before it got too far into decomposition. Who knows, it's up to you, it's within your taste. There's no wrong way, okay, I'm telling you, there's no wrong way. So you go ahead and just start filling all this in, and uh, you know, uh, even like with these, I don't think I wanted to bridge the gap, and then under here, I went ahead and uh, you can take uh, spray adhesive to coat and hold the plastic for you in place. Or you can take your glue gun and glue. See, under here, what I did was I glue gunned under here and put plastic up under here and then shrink wrapped it because I didn't want the bottom of the mouth open. In fact, I wanted to fill it. And what I did to do that was once I had a bottom filled, I just took plastic and then like crumpled it up and stuffed it inside the mouth and then heated it up and then I used a knife or you can use a screwdriver something metallic to push and manipulate you can manipulate this stuff you can move it around once it's really hot you can blend it in you can actually put little details in it if you so choose I found when I tried to put the eyes in they were too big so what I did was I took the heat gun and held it over the eye socket which heated up this plastic here and made it real soft and I was able to easily but yet firmly with some resistance still to push the eyeball into the socket okay and so the plastic is hot and pliable enough that it would allow the eyeball to go in but once it cooled, it was going to lock it in. You're not going to get these eyes out. You're going to have to, like, rip all this stuff out. I took more plastic and then twisted it and made fine little threads that I used to fill in the spaces around the eyeballs, the gaps, okay? And then I heated that and manipulated, pushed it in with a knife, and then once I got it to where I was happy with it, 
and I, I had the corpsing all done. Um, one thing also I did too was to, uh, if you can see here, was you can take your glue gun and if you pull, pull the trigger very gently and drag it along, you can create veins. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do with this. And, uh, um, and it, it's super effective. I, like I said, I wish I'd done, started playing around with this a lot, a lot sooner. Now the painting, um, the painting was, I used, um, a, a, it's called burnt umber. It's a really dark color and I painted the entire thing that uh, as a base color. And then I took, um, I think it was called Pueblo, which is kind of like a rusty color. And then I dry brushed the whole thing. And then the last thing that I did was I took uh, black and white and mixed uh, charcoal gray and then dry brushed it again just to give it some uh, you know make it pop you know looking at this guy I was like what do I want to do with it what do I want him to be and I kept envisioning a mohawk I don't know what it was I, I wanted him to have a mohawk he started to look post-apocalyptic to me and so I had a, a wig I think you saw me wear it when I did the uh, uh, mummy hand tutorial uh, I me mean, I like to screw around and, and have a bit of fun while I'm doing this stuff so I took this beautiful you know Trump eat your heart out so but I took this wig you need to find them at Goodwill like a dime a dozen they're everywhere all right but the thing you're gonna want to remember and now please pay attention closely you do not want to take a pair of scissors and cut a wig like this. It's not going to work. You're going to lose a bunch of hair. Uh, the way these things are woven, they're woven in layers. Okay? The first thing you want to do if you want a mohawk or just patches of hair, whatever you decide, is to really study the wig and look at which direction the hair is going. Okay? We're going to want the hair to go front to back, okay? So, this piece here looks pretty good. It's all going in one direction. It's not going this way, because uh, if we put a piece on, if we glued it on the skull like this, well, actually, that would probably work. It's kind of like a, my dad used to do that. I think they call it, they call that a comb over, you know? But we don't want a comb over, okay? We want to do a mohawk. So we want the hair to go the same direction. But cutting it, and this is where it's important, you're going to want to take a razor knife or a razor blade, and you're going to want to cut it from the inside. Just cut the webbing and follow along until you get to the end and then of course start up again depending on the width that you want this is what I ended up with this is the entire width okay so and then I hot glued it on there you can use super glue or E6 or whatever you just glue it on there and then uh, but but that's not enough you're not gonna you're just gonna have you know floppy you know the hair is just gonna say lay flat so if you want a mohawk what you're gonna have to do is take your piece and turn it upside down and and tease the hair to get it to stand up and then what I did was I took Mod Podge you could probably use uh, Elmer's glue as well and then I just massaged it and pulled on it to saturate the hair and then once I got it into the position that I wanted and I was happy with it I didn't want a refined mohawk I wanted you know this is a corpse's head so it's seen better days you know this is a remnant of its former self so once I got it in the position that I want you're gonna want to find a way 
of maybe putting it on the edge of a, of a desk or a beer or put something heavy on it. You want it to allow it to dry overnight upside down. So that way when you wake up the next morning, your character has a mohawk. Okay? So I was happy with that. I like that. You know, he's got a mohawk now. His eyeballs are in. His teeth are there. Even though I made them probably a bit big. This is my first one, like I said. The beauty part is that you could do one, if it's your first time, you do one, and it doesn't come out quite how you would expect. You can always do another one. You can do as many as you want, you know? If you wanna buy those cheaper plastic dollar store skulls to practice before you invest in, you know, a higher end skull to do this. There's no wrong way, like I said. So, the last thing I, I was looking at this guy, I was like, you know what, he would be cool with the goatee, you know? Uh, so, I had another piece, and I went and cut another, uh, found another piece that would work of the wig, and I cut that out, and then I glued that on to his chin. And the thing about the, uh, the wig material is that it has this raw, you know, uh, has this raw edge to it okay and I found that the beauty part is is that once it's glued on there you can take hot glue and, and, and knead it into the edges and blend it all in so that you don't see any of that and it's blended into the rest of the skull um, so so I, he's got a goatee now, and I was like, yeah, that's cool, but you know what? My buddy Keith over there at Cobwebs and Candlestick Sticks has a big, long goatee, too, but he braids that joker into a, a French braid, I guess you could call it, and so I said, you know what the hell? I'm going to do that, too. So, I don't know. Is this Keith's alter ego from the post-apocalypse? I don't know. He's got his little goatee there. Um, for now, I've got a little piece of red yarn on there. That's not stained. I think I might do like a, you know, a little wrap or something with some leather or something like that to kind of dress it up. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the post-apocalyptic trophy head. But he needs a name. And that's going to be up to you. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Um, if you haven't done so already, like and subscribe and hit that bell. It's going to inform you when I upload another video. And there's so much coming. I wish, you know, I wish I could do this all day. If I could do this all day, I would uh, I would be bringing you a heck of a lot more. Uh, me, I work full time and I have family. So uh, I got to juggle, juggle the time I can and do what I can with what, what I have. But uh, I appreciate all of you. I'm grateful for you. The subscribers who've been around from day one and then the new subscribers and I encourage you all to go check out my brothers in arms the trio of terror which is myself uh, my, my buddy uh, Keith from cobwebs and candlesticks and uh, Vic Springston from graveyard creepers and speaking of corpsing Vic does a lot of corpsing so you need to go check out what he's doing with the corpsing so anyways until next time I appreciate you Peace.